Hi everybody, my name's Robbie. I'm an intensive care paramedic educator from Melbourne, Victoria, with a particular interest in airway management. And I've been asked to share my views on managing the patient with a threatened airway from a pre-hospital paramedic perspective. And this is an interesting question. It's a very complex question. I think first of all, we have to consider who we are. And by that, I mean, what our organization looks like. Are we able to carry out advanced airway management such as RSI? And if not, what are the options open to us when we're managing a patient with a threatened airway? And assuming even if we are able to manage that patient, we have to consider what is best for that patient. So what is wrong with the patient? Clinically, what is happening that is threatening in your airway? And what's the likely progression of this process? How quickly are they going to deteriorate, if at all? And these are very difficult questions to answer. We don't have a lot of experience necessarily with some of these patients. And we don't necessarily know, even in patients who we think we have a good handle of the clinical situation, how that particular patient in front of us is going to progress. However, that's something that uh, all emergency care revolves around, the uh, uncertainty and the grey. Pre-hospital, we have particular issues. We have to consider where we are. What sort of situation do we find ourselves in? And is it conducive to safe airway management? Obviously, sometimes our hand is forced and we have to intervene. It's part of what we do as paramedics, as pre-hospital care providers, any pre-hospital care providers. We have to consider how far away we are from help and what that help looks like. Is it a small bush nursing hospital down the road versus traveling further to a more capable hospital further away? And how are we going to get there? This is an important question. By a road, we can pull over and sort things out along the way. But if we're going by hymns, a quick stop to sort out a clinical problem isn't possible. And that's gonna skew how we look at any particular clinical problem in front of us. However, what we're looking at really is risk versus benefit. And we do this every day. We consider the risks and benefits of everything we provide for our patients or don't provide to our patients, we choose to withhold. It's just particularly tricky in this patient with a threatened airway. We know that however good you are, however good your organization are, however robust your processes are, Intubation, particularly RSI, carries with it risk. That's unavoidable. So the question then becomes for us with the patient in front of us, is the risk of intervening with intubation greater than the risk of not? Uh, is the risk of sins of commission greater than the risk of sins of omission? And if we are going to intervene, when are we going to intervene? How fast is this process going to progress that the patient is suffering from. If we intubate early to protect that airway, we're likely to have more physiological reserve and potentially have less anatomical difficulty when we are intubating that patient. But we are then exposing that patient to the risk of intubation and we don't actually necessarily know always whether that disease process or that process was going to progress. If we leave it too late, though, we then find ourselves in a situation where we have to intervene and the patient has less physiological reserve uh, and a greater anatomical difficulty. And so therefore, we have to consider when we intervene, and if we're going to intervene, what happens if we're not successful in our primary plan? Are we able to carry out plan B, C or D? Are we able to place a supraglottic airway in a particular patient? Are we going to be able to affect safe and effective front of neck access, depending on the situation? These are all questions that we're going to have to grapple with for any individual patient in front of us. And so many things go into that decision making that it's impossible to give a simple answer. And unfortunately, we have to look at a lot of these cases in the retrospectoscope to work out what should we do? What should we have done? What could we have done? What might we do next time? So those are my thoughts as a paramedic who deals with uh, difficult airways and, and airway management in the pre-hospital setting. But I like to think that that's probably the same approach or a very similar approach to anyone working in a pre-hospital setting. I don't believe that it matters 
necessarily to the patient who intubates them or who manages their airway or makes the decisions. I don't think they care. I think they care that it's done well and therefore it behooves all of us who work in the pre-hospital setting or any setting where we're managing airways to do so to the highest level that we can to make sure that we're all working in the same fashion and that we're all uh, pulling in the same direction and we're ensuring that everyone, regardless of where you work and how you work, what you are and, and what you're called, that we're all doing the best we can for the patient in front of us. So those are my thoughts. Um, I look forward to speaking with you all soon and uh, stay safe out there.